interesting experience I had recently, a, a white woman in a work context came up to me after learning that I was half Filipino, and this is what she said as her introduction to me. She said, when I was growing up, we had a Filipino nanny. <laughs> wait, wait, she wasn't none. Um, when I was growing up, we had a Filipino nanny, and my brother got her pregnant. Okay. Yeah, let's pause a bit. <laughs> the choice of words there, got her pregnant, that's messed up. There's like, that's suggesting that there was a trick happening there. Um, but what's really messed up is if you know about the live-in caregiver program that brings a lot of Filipino women to this country um, to raise children, uh, they have to stay working with the same family for several years in order to be considered to be a permanent resident. So that means they have to stay silent. They can't complain a lot, and they're subjected to a lot of abuse. Um, and so there's thousands of women here uh, who have for years been raising children, and their demands have simply been that if we're good enough to raise your kids, we're good enough to live here. I think that makes sense. Um, but actually, just this week, this government um, changed laws to actually make it harder for these women um, to become permanent residents. And it's not actually an outlandish demand, because this very thing is granted to people who are deemed skilled workers. So you can actually come here from another country if you're deemed a skilled worker and become a permanent resident right away. Um, what is a skilled worker? So I looked this up. One of the first things that shows up on the list of skilled jobs, actor slash comedian. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the flattery. If I mess up at work, I don't know, I might spill a drink, some of you might not have as good a time. Um, if you mess up when you're raising children, um, that kid might grow up to like become a racist. <laughs> or like, even worse, like become a racist and then become the Minister of Immigration. <laughs> undervaluing that labor, and of course that's, that's mostly the work of women that we're undervaluing there. But uh, the racism was also coming up this year around the uh, temporary foreign worker issue. So for those of you who saw that, that was um, some people in Victoria who were initially angry because um, some Filipino folks as temporary foreign workers uh, were here working in a McDonald's, and uh, apparently there were some teenagers there who, who wanted those jobs. And there was a big uproar. The thing that, again, to me is the signifier here is the language that's used. So everyone who's getting angry was saying that these immigrants are stealing our jobs. So again, steal is, is really strong language, and um, obviously it immediately forces us to assume that this person is somehow a criminal, when in fact they were here legally doing this work. And also, you can't steal a job. I'm pretty sure it's physically impossible. <laughs> At best, you might be able to like, get in there and work that job for like 10 minutes. <laughs> but then they're gonna get you out of there. I mean, to be able to steal it and like, hold it down nine to five for like two weeks and then also convince the management to like add you to the payroll. <laughs> Very logistically complicated. Um, so what I was thinking about that idea, and I actually, I'm also into making films, and I'm working on a screenplay um, for a feature film. It's an action movie. It's a heist movie about a ragtag group of Filipino people <laughs> who are plotting to come to this country and steal a whole bunch of jobs. So, I quickly want to run this, this script the outline by you just to see what you think. Um, so in the opening, they're all gathered in this basement somewhere in the Philippines. There's a bunch of them and they're like plotting. And there's the leader, Francisco, and he's like, okay, okay, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna get over there and, uh, and we're gonna roll up in the van. I've been casing out this guy's place. His name's Burger King. <laughs> he is loaded. We're gonna roll up in this van. Philomena, you're gonna Jimmy, open that door. Then we're just gonna get in there and clean the clean the floor. And 
toilets and take out the grease traps, you know, just like working. Um, and then the, the second act is uh, these folks uh, spending four years saving up the money to even be able to come here in the first place. It's a long second act. <laughs> but then it happens, and they get here, and the final act they're going in, but right before they're about to do it, they're about to break open that door, one guy gets cold feet, and he's like, no, I'm out, I'm out. I, I promised my wife the last job I stole was the last job I was gonna steal. Can't do it. But of course, Francisco, the ringleader, he brings them out together, and he says, uh, oh, you haven't even let me told you about the, uh, the jackpot at the end of this, the payday. You know, uh, minimum wage? You know, the, the legal minimum amount of money that can be paid to a human being in this country? Well, if we play our cards right, we're going to be making minimum wage. Uh, thank you for having me.